There's feature film adventure with Benji this afternoon on ITV. Stop screaming and get in there. Someone's going to get hurt. Hey, what is this? What are they doing here? Just shut up. Linda, take them in the other room. No, I won't shut up. They're supposed to be out in the country looking at a horse. Now, what are they doing here? I bargained for a simple con game. Not kidnapping. And uh, have they called yet? No. Uh, Has there been any attempt to get a hold of you at all since you no, got to know? No, we've had a little bit of trouble getting this phone. Oh, no! Catch up with Benji this afternoon at 2. For the best family films this Christmas, there really is no place like ITV. Good night. Hello. I've got a bit of a grog shop out here. I have a small brewery in a remote part of Australia. Oh, I do brew the uh, odd drop of amber fluid. Mm, I brew a beer called Kangabrew. A Kangabrew, Picked it up from which the is other based idea. on an old Aboriginal recipe. I was, spread the word I was planning a worldwide advertising campaign, but then Kestrel Pilsner Lager arrived, a British brew, which was acclaimed for its dry, strong taste. Makes mine taste like which is aboriginal for... A sheep dip. Kestrel makes kangaroo taste like Wallabra Wonga. When you really know about good furniture prices, go straight to Court's January sale. The sale starts 9.30 Monday. Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lords are leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids are milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese are laying, five gold rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. Most forms of investment have a number of strings attached. Some deduct income tax, whether you pay tax or not. Some tie up your money for years, some deduct interest whenever you withdraw. But a national savings investment account has only one. One month's notice of withdrawal. In return, we'll pay you 11% interest in full before tax. For every pound invested for each calendar month. Full details are at your post office. You won't forget, will you? Nice to wake up in the warm, electric, with slimline storage heaters. If you're putting in heating, a slimline heating system runs on less than half price electric with Economy 7 overnight electricity. With today's fuel prices, slimline storage heaters can well cost you less to run than a boiler and radiators. Slimline heating and a tank full of hot water. Hey, how did you get there? <laughs> slimline storage heaters. The boiler beaters. Are you bringing up a child on your own? It doesn't matter if you're not the parent, but if you're getting child benefit, there is another allowance you can claim. It's called One Parent Benefit. Ask at your Social Security office for more details. On Tuesday evening at 8.45, John Wells asks anyone for Dennis. Dennis? Ah, Margaret. What do these mean? Well, I suppose that was fairly obvious. The Admiral has her orders. The cellar remains locked until our European guests arrive. I'm sorry to be so touchy. I'll bend over backwards, strain every sinew, but the gut, the bulldog breed. Oh, oh. Economy, Dennis, you know it makes sense. Why is she calling you a count? You've met my husband. No, I don't think we've ever had that pleasure, but I'm sure we'll assume a staunch chance. 
Judas? No, Dennis, with one M. The hilarious private eye letters to Dear Bill come to the small screen in Anyone for Dennis. That's on Tuesday night at 8.45 here on HTV West. Something memorable happened to the real Mark Thatcher in January this year. He was lost in the Sahara. And After Anyone for Dennis is a programme which looks at some of the news stories of 1982. It's that time of the year when the kilts are swinging and the haggis are flying. You get a double dose of the Hogmanays on New Year's Eve. As well as the usual programme just before midnight, Russ Abbott has his own definitive version. Live from Invercockaleaky Castle, that's at 8 o'clock. Now, University Challenge. University Challenge Tournament. Asking the questions, Van Bergascoyne. Hello and welcome to the finals of this year's University Challenge. Now, as usual, our finals are the best of three games, so it could be two games or three. And the finalists are the University of St Andrews and University College Oxford. So let's meet the teams and first, St Andrews. Kevin Philpott of Tamatton near Inverness, graduate in medieval history. Stephen Watt from Richmond, Surrey, studying philosophy and linguistics. And their captain? Andrew Price from Bradford, studying physics. Alan Frith from Watford, studying history. Last year, Edinburgh was in the final, but they were beaten in the final by an Irish team, Belfast. And this year, therefore, St Andrews are, in fact, competing to become perhaps our first Scottish winners of University Challenge. And they're challenging finalists. Let's meet them. University College, Oxford. Nick Long from Midgham in Berkshire, reading history. Bill Johnston from Bower and Furness, Cumbria, reading French and Russian. And their captain? Sean Lang from New Malden in Surrey, reading history. Howard Turner from Saltburn in Cleveland, reading physics. Now, uni have also going for a rather special record. They're one of the only three um, colleges or universities in, in Britain ever to have won University Challenge twice before. So they're, in fact, going to make it the first ever to make it a hat-trick if they win. So there's a record on st at stake on each side. Now, in our, in our finals over the years, uh, the system has grown up that people, the teams choose their own prizes. We used to give them prizes which they usually didn't like, so now they choose their own. And if they win this year, St Andrews have chosen to have a visual display unit for their computer. And for those who still fancy the printed word, they'll spend the rest of the money on books. And Univ are going to have a VCR for their JCR, or in other words, in more comprehensible words, a video recording machine for their junior common room. So those are the prizes, the rules as usual. Everyone on his own for a starter question for 10 points, and then a more valuable bonus, invariably 15, which the team can discuss. So let's go straight into the first leg of the finals. Here's the first starter for 10. Which football team won the European Cup every year from 1956 to 19... St. Andrews Price. Real Madrid. Real Madrid, 10 points. St. Andrews first blood, a bonus of 15. First, Maximilian was made Emperor of Mexico and was executed in Mexico in the same decade. Which decade? 1840s? 1860s. 1860s. 1860s is correct. 1863 and 1867, respectively. Second, after Keats has imagined the voice of the nightingale being heard in ancient days by emperor and clown, he goes on to imagine it being heard by a girl in tears, sick for home. Who? It is Ruth, from the book of Ruth. And last, whose gigantic ten-act drama of 1873, Emperor and Galilean, was followed four years later by the more manageable Pillars of Society? Ibsen. Ibsen, Ibsen to five points. Starter again. Which eminent lawyer who died in 1689 does the DNB describe as devoid of principle? St. Andrew's Philpott. Judge Jeffries. Yes, correct. Of drunken and extravagant habits and all sorts of dreadful things it goes on to tell us. A bonus of 15 St. Andrews. First, what is the Sika, S-I-K-A, originally a native of Japan, which has established itself in the wild in one part of England? It's a species of deer. A species of deer now living in the New Forest, five points. Second. Which American novelist wrote The Deer Slayer in 1841? Fenimore Cooper, yes. Fenimore Cooper. Fenimore Cooper, five points. And last, what was the name of the lady addressed by Richard Lovelace with the not very consoling lines, I could not love thee, dear, so much, loved I not honour more? It is... What do you do with the deer? Anyone? 
It is Lucasta. The poem is called to Lucasta, going to the wars. And here's a starter again. What is the pseudonym of Françoise Coiré, author of novels such as Un Certain Sourire and M... Univ Turner. Francois Sagan. Francois Sagan, correct, and they're off 10 points, a bonus of 15. First, what is the more familiar religious term for the paraclete? The Holy Ghost. The Holy, the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, five points. Second, who wrote the piano trio known as the Ghost or Spirit Trio because of the mysterious opening of the second movement? Do you know? No. Anyone? Debussy? No, it's Beethoven, the Geister Trio. <laughs> and last, where was it possible on occasions in the 19th century to see Pepper's Ghost? Um, on the stage in a theatre. On the stage in a theatre, it was a reflection of an actor which made him look like a ghost. Five points. The starter again. <clears throat> which act of 1797 in Britain was finally abolished by Parliament on the 11th of March 1981, thus making it no longer possible to offend in the way the six Dorset farm labourers did? St Andrew's Frith. That was the Top of Martyrs, uh, the Combination Act. Um, it's... Um, no, five-point penalty. Uh, I, hadn't, I hadn't finished. Five-point penalty is St Andrews, the Full Crescent University College. Dorset labourers did, who were transported to Australia in 1834. You're on your own. It is... It's, in fact, the taking of unlawful oaths. He was quite right. It was the Tolpot of Martyrs, but it wasn't the Combination Act they were done for, but swearing unlawful oaths together. A starter again. What is the non-technical name for polynosis? Polynosis. Univ Turner. I think many diseases. No. St. Andrew, you're too Greek. St. Andrew's, can you take it on your own? No conferring. It is as simple as hay fever, pollen in that sense. Pollenosis. A starter again. How many eyes had these four between them? The Duke of Wellington, Polyphemus, Odin, and Ulysses. St. Andrew's Price. Five. No. Univ, can you take it? You're on your own. Univ Lang. Eight. No, they had six. Polyphemus of the one-eyed Cyclops. Ed Odin exchanged one eye for, his, for wisdom, and the other two had two each, making six. A starter again. What was the tallow derived from which was used for the making of tallow candles? Univ Johnston. Reeds. No, St. Andrews, can you take it? St. Andrews, Philpot. Fat. Yes, animal fat, five, ten, ten points. Suet and so on, ten points. A bonus of fifteen. First, what aerobatic manoeuvre consists of a complete revolution about the longitudinal axis? Loop the loop. No, a roll, a longitudinal axis rather than uh, that way around. Second, what process, according to Winston Churchill, like the Mississippi just keeps rolling along, adding let it roll, let it roll on full flood, which since the year was 1940 was not surprising. He's talking about what? No. The channel. No, no, there was an increasing cooperation between Britain and the United States. And last, what North Country hermit and mystic wrote Incendium Amoris, The Fire of Love, and Emendatio Vitae, The Mending of Life, and had great spiritual influence in the 14th century? Was it William of Ockham? No, it was Richard Raleigh of Hampel. We've got a music question coming, a music bonus of 15. Here's a starter. Which composer perpetrated this? And here it is. Univ Lang. Sanson. Sanson is correct from the Carnival of the Animals. At 10 points to Univ and a bonus of 15 could bring you up there neck and neck. More scales. You have to identify the work from which they come and here's the first. Beethoven, Beethoven's Beethoven, I like it all, that's correct. Beethoven's Emperor Concerto, <laughs> five points. And second, this one, here it is. Brahms? No, it's a hard one, actually, it's a hard bit, it seems to me. Mozart's Don Giovanni Overture, that's from. And last, this one, here it is. Yes, which though? Uh, I need the piece. Symphony number three. Bad luck, one eyed. Symphony number four in E minor, Brahms. Bad luck, though. Ten points only between the teams, and here's a starter again. 
Which epoch, beginning about 65 million years ago and lasting some 10 million years, saw the first placental mammals and is classed as the first epoch of the tertiary period? St. Andrew's Frith. Cenozoic. No, you, you know, can you take it? You're on your own open You live long. Pleistocene. No, Paleocene. And here's the starter again. What is the modern name for Elizabethville, which in the early 1960s was the capital of the Katanga province of Congo, Kinshasa, and is now the capital of the Shaba region of Zaire? St. Andrew's Price. Katanga. No, Univ, can you take it? It is... Univ Lang. Lesotho? No, it's Lubumbashi. We're fooling on these. A starter again. For what and at what type of occasion are the contents of a lectionary used? St. Andrew's Philpott. Uh, they're used at mass. The readings. But correct. For reading aloud at divine service, 10 points. St. Andrew's, a bonus of 15. First, what people were known in various eastern countries as Ferengis? Oh, Ferengis. No, it's... English and Indian. Anyone? The English and the Indian. Yes, any Europeans, correct? I'll accept the English by the Indians and others. Second for five points. In what part of the world was a group of warriors known as an Impi and their leader Zulus. as an Induna? Zulus. South Africa. South Zulus. African Zulus, correct. Five points. And last, who wrote the line, Abroad is unutterably bloody and foreigners are fiends in her novel, The Pursuit of Love? Nancy Mitford. Nancy Mitford, five points. The starter again. What English title was given to an Italian film of 1968, directed by Sergio Leone, called Il Buono... Univ Johnston. The Good, the Bad and the Ugly. Correct. Il Buono, Il Brutto, Il Cattivo, ten points to two. Univ, a bonus of 15. First, according to sporting legend, what would be known now as the Bunbury, after the first winner of the event, if a coin tossed in 1780 had fallen the other way up? 